What's up guys, The Snowman here back on the hard courts of Tampa, Florida, and today we're gonna go over the basic parts of a tennis racket, what each part is referred to as, what its purpose is. Of course, not all rackets look and feel the exact same. Uh, different rackets have different sizes, different weights, but today it's more of just a generic explanation of the uh, many different parts of a tennis racket. So let's start at the bottom of the racket and we begin with Sir mix -a -Lot's favorite part, the butt. The butt refers to the bottom most part of the racket that increases the size or helps flow flare out the bottom of the racket's handle. It helps to ensure the racket doesn't slip out of a player's hand. And on every butt is the butt cap, which is the piece of plastic at the bottom here. Most butt caps are removable, so you can insert weights inside to customize the weight and the balance of your racket. You'll also find the racket logo most times on the butt cap. Just above the butt then is the handle, which refers to the entire length of the area where a player places his or her hands to hold the racket. The average circumference of the handle is between four and 1 8 inches and 4 and 5 8 inches. Of course, it's important to find the correct size for you because too small or too large of a handle can put excess strain on your hand and wrist and cause injury. Very important component that works in conjunction with the handle is the grip. The grip is the outer covering of the handle which provides both cushion and traction to ensure a firm grip. Uh, many players will add over grips on top of their grips as well. Over grips make it easier and even more cushion to hold. They can also increase the thickness of the handle. At the top of the handle is the grip tape. This secures the grip to the racket and prevents it from unraveling. I also want to mention that a racket's handle always has eight sides or eight bevels. The bevels are important in preventing the racket from twisting or rotating in a player's hand. They're also very useful and practical when learning how to grip a tennis racket properly. So that's the bottom third of the racket. Moving on to the middle, the shaft is the general term that refers to the part of the racket between the handle and the head, which we'll get to in a moment. Within the shaft is the throat, also called the triangle because the throat is the open part of the racket located just below the head. Uh, most modern rackets contain open throats which allows air to pass through and create less drag when swinging, so it's more aerodynamic that way. Also a racket's stiffness is determined by the flexibility of the throat. Next we get to the head of the racket. The head or the frame refers to the entire oval portion where the strings are. A larger head size means a more powerful racket but with less control. Likewise, smaller heads offer less power but increase control, and head sizes can vary greatly from racket to racket, but the average head is between 95 and 110 square inches. And if you're a beginner, you may want a larger head size as they offer a greater margin of error. Uh, the rim is just the outer edge of the racket head frame. The beam is the side of the head, more specifically the width of the racket head. The wider the beam is, the thicker the racket is, and in turn that thickness can affect the weight and the power. Power rackets tend to have a wider beam, which allows the strings to move more freely, generating more power. And then control rackets tend to have smaller beams, which limit string movement, creating more control. Speaking of the strings, let's talk about them next. The string pattern crisscrosses over the face of the racket, providing a contact point for the tennis ball. A one important variable regarding the strings is the tension that they're strung at. That tension directly impacts factors like power, control, spin, and durability. And technically we call the strings that run vertically up and down the main strings and the strings that run horizontal are the cross strings. Uh, just a few parts left. The bumper guard is the piece of plastic at the top of the racket's head which protects the impact points of this area. Also helps prevent cracking and scraping. Finally we have what are called grommets. The grommets are the little plastic bits at the base of each string hole that keep the string from rubbing against the racket frame. Uh, just like many other components we've discussed today the grommets can affect power and control by altering the string movement. They also protect the strings from wear and tear. And grommets attach to the grommet strip, which line the outside of your racket head. So wherever there are strings, there are grommets. And wherever there are grommets, we have the grommet strip. Its purpose is to protect the strings from the drilled holes that the strings flow through so you can uh, get out there, dominate on the court. All right, so now you should have a pretty good understanding of the different parts of a tennis racket. You know, the handle, the shaft, the head, and all the specific parts in between. If you enjoyed this video or found it informational, please subscribe to the Snowman Sports Media for more tennis content. And, uh, you know, follow me on Instagram at Snowman Sports Media. And I'll be back real soon. Thanks a lot. Cheers.